My G's just the same. The narrow road's a straight road. It has no crooks or bends. Well, I gotta go on with my Jesus, for I know he's my best friend. Well, I've faced a lot of trials down here along the way. Way, and I can almost see the light. I'll soon be home to stay. Well, I'm going. Jesus just the same Well I'm going on to my Jesus just the same You may false accuse me Scandalize my name But I'm going on to my Jesus just the same Some people may laugh Talk about me when I shout There's one thing for sure Well I know what I'm shouting about well, I've left my sins at Calvary, covered by the blood. And I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and cradled in God's love. Well, I'm going on to my Jesus just the same. Well, I'm going on to my Jesus just the same. You may false accuse me, scandalize my name, but I'm going on. Good morning to everybody. If you haven't, greet your neighbor there around you, behind you, in front of you, side you. All right. You all look like you put on some weight. Hey, Amen. Anybody gain any pounds over the week? Yeah, I hear you. Woo. I told Carla, I was telling this morning, it's time to get rid of it all, throw it out. I've had it for three days, and that's enough. Amen. Come on. Yeah, something new. Anyway, good to see y'all. And uh, I just want to announce tonight we're having the Browders. And I, I don't even remember where the Browders are from. Does anybody remember where they're from? Down south somewhere. But anyway, they're coming to a Christmas uh, program tonight. And I'm telling you, I'm excited about hearing them come and, or having them come to hear them. And uh, so... It's for all the family, so kids would love it too. So he, he assured me of that. So come out and join us tonight at 6 o'clock to have the Browders. All right, go kick off our Christmas season, if you will. All right, everybody good? No wanted tonight. All right, anything else? All right, please remember today at uh, 2 o'clock, we're having a funeral for Regina Heidi. Uh, and... Uh, if you would, remember this family in prayer and lift them up. And remember me, that God will give me the words to comfort this family and glorify God in this time of passing of this loved one. And I was sharing earlier this morning that during our revival, um, she had Lou Gehrig's disease, and she fought a really tough battle. And she come that night to be baptized, and I know it was really hard for her, and, uh, but she just wanted to nail it down and be ready to meet God. And what a blessing. There's nothing greater than be ready to meet God. Amen. And the title of my message today is Emmanuel, God with us. Look at your neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor. Emmanuel, God with us. We need God with us. Amen. All right. We're going to have prayer. If you'd like to call the name out real loud and clear, if you will, call the name out. Rose Witt. All right. Anyone else? Yeah. Who else? Who else? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Wait. Libby? Julie. Okay. All right. Okay. Ben. Who? Okay. Ben Edwards. Okay. Christy, Stenna. All right. Be Charlie no. Powell. Who? Charlie Powell. Okay. All right. Be no one else. Let's stand. Okay. If you touch somebody with your elbow there, agree with them. 
Hey, man, give them a nudge under the ribs. Yeah, okay. All right, let's agree in prayer. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. And God, we invite you into our service. We ask for the Holy Spirit to have rule and reign. Thank you, God, that you're with us. God, we feel and know that you're there. You said you never leave us or forsake us. God, we cry out for our country. We cry out for our leaders, God. We cry out, God, for our community. And God, we cry out for those that's shut in, in the hospitals, the nursing homes, those that's on the prayer list. God, we need you, God. We need you to be with us. And dear God, for many years we ran from you. And God, when you pursued us, and we thank you, God, you never gave up on us and you chose us. We thank you that you loved us when we was unlovable. And God, we just thank you for being God this morning. I pray for these names that was called out. They'll be touched by the Master. And God, I pray someone might be gloriously saved today or come forth and follow through with baptism or be healed or be encouraged in the Lord. Or when we leave here, say it's been good to be in God's house with God's people. And God, we're all wretched sinners and we need a Savior, God. We need your direction. So God, we pray you anoint the preach word today. Pray you anoint the music today. We're ready to have some church. <laughs> We're ready to glorify you and just give you praise. You're an awesome God. And we just thank you, God, for this time of the year, God. We thank you for a wonderful Thanksgiving. We're looking forward to Christmas, God. And, but most of all, that you'll be most first and foremost in our Christmas, God. And that we'll realize about the giving gift of salvation. And we'll want to share it with others. God will give you all the praise when we all said. Amen. Amen. All right, buddy. Let her fly. Kevin, we should have brought our deer stand. Huh? We could do about as good here as we've been doing, anyway. Well, let me tell you who Jesus is. He's the rock of all ages. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the way, the truth, and the light. He's the beginning and the end. It's much more than this, my friend. He's the son of man He's coming back again Well, I believe in the Father I believe in the Son I believe in the Holy Ghost And all these three in one Well, let me tell you who Jesus is He's the rock of all ages He's the Alpha and the Omega and the light is the beginning and the end It's much more than this, my friend He's the son of man He's coming back again you Had too much turkey? Well, I believe in the Father I believe in the Son I believe in the Holy of all ages He's the Alpha and the Omega He's the way, the truth and the light He's the beginning and the end It's much more than this, my friend He's the Son of Man He's coming back again One more time Well, I believe in the Father I believe in the Son, I believe in the Holy Ghost, and all these three in one, well let me tell you who Jesus is, He's the rock of all ages, He's the Alpha and the Omega, He's the way, the truth, and the light, He's the beginning and the end, it's much more than this my friend. He's the son of man, he's coming back again. Oh, one more. I'll fly away. I'll fly away. What page is it on? 40. I better look at it just in case. Look at it with. 
Well, some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, bye and bye. I'll fly away. Now when the shadows of this life have grown, I'll fly away. a few more happy days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away oh I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away in the morning when Hallelujah, bye and bye I'll fly away Well, tell me now, what do you think about Jesus? He's all right Well, what do you think about Jesus? He's all right Well, what do you think about Jesus? He's all right He's all right, he's all right, he's all right well, this train is bound for glory, this train This train is bound for glory, this train Well, this train is bound to glory If you want to go to heaven, then you gotta live old This train is bound for glory, this train Now this train is just one station, this train This train is just one station, this train well, this train is just one station, Acts 238, salvation. This train, just one station, this train. Oh, crying holy, holy to the Lord. Oh, crying holy, holy, holy to the Lord. Well, if I could, I surely would stand on that rock. Praise the Lord where Moses stood. Hey, Lord, I ain't no sinner now. Yes, Lord, I ain't no sinner now. Well, I've been to that river, and I've been baptized. And, Lord, I ain't no sinner now. Oh, it's coming down, down, down. Coming down, down, down. Oh, the glory of the Lord coming down. The saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way. Then the glory of the Lord is coming down. Would you lead us in a word of prayer? John comes to get ready to sing. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we thank you again for this opportunity. Lord, I thank you today in our uh, Sunday school lesson with on grace. That's undeserved favor. And at this time of Christmas and the gifts and Everything that's going on, Lord, the one gift that we have is the hope of eternal life. And how undeserving are we of that, God? But you are showing us grace that you sent your Son to this earth to die on a cross, Lord, that we could have the hope of eternal life, Lord. Lord, I pray today that there be people here today that does not know that. Lord, that today would be the time that they would make that decision, Lord. We know that this time is a time of giving and gifts. And I was thinking earlier as I told the kids, you know, there's a lot of dads that will be working some overtime trying to make some money to buy some presents for their kids. But Lord, you offer a gift that we don't have to work for. Amen. That we don't have to do anything Glory. for except to accept. Amen. Lord, and I just thank you and I praise you, Lord, that we serve the Almighty. Lord, we serve the King of Kings. 
the Lord of Lords, Lord, the one that is always there, the rock, nothing that ever wavers, nothing that ever gives up, nothing that ever comes against us, Lord. And I pray again today, Lord, as I heard Tammy call out Brandon and Warren, Lord. And I pray for the other ones, Lord, that we pray for on Monday nights that does not have salvation, that is not in this house today, Lord, that is not with their families in this house, Lord, the young men that have families and have kids that are not here with them or do not bring them, Lord. I pray a conviction on them that they cannot stand it, Lord. I pray that they are troubled in their sleep, they're troubled in their work, Lord, that you would just bring salvation to their lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 A lot of uh, gifts from singing and preaching, but I tell you, Brother Keith has been given the gift of prayer. Amen. Always being so, you can tell it comes from the soul. Not the, not the. Sometimes when I get a song given to me, I wonder, Lord, is this what you want me to sing? And I always ask for a confirmation this morning. Sunday School Class Revelation 21. Does he'll wipe away all tears. No more sorrow, no more death, no more night. And even as Christians, we have death, we have pain. But like the pastor said, God is with us. we got so much forward to look for. And that's, you know, we should be rejoicing on that. When we have a pain, we know that there's something a lot better waiting for us. On this road we are traveling to heaven We've all had some pain in our lives But those heartaches will vanish forever When the Savior Wipes the tears from our eyes. All sorrows will end, and our voices will blend. A new song of joy we will sing. There'll be no more goodbyes. We'll forget how to cry When the Savior wipes the tears from our eyes Though our loved ones may go on before us we don't grieve as though we had no hope but for those who have trusted in Jesus will rejoice in his glory to share all sorrows will end and our voices will blend a new song of joy we will sing there'll be no more goodbyes we'll forget how to cry when the Savior wipes the tears from our eyes. All sorrows will end and our voices will blend. A new song of joy 
we will sing. There'll be no more goodbyes. We'll forget how to cry when the Savior wipes the tears from our eyes. Got one. She ain't got no shoes on. All right. She's on holy ground. This is my mom's favorite Christmas song, so she's big. Little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee. Amen. 
Cindy, come sing my song, okay, before I preach. All right. Could you hurry up? Oh, what, well, you limping? Bad turkey leg. shutting me off. All right, if you take your Bibles, we'll be in the first book in the New Testament, the first chapter, Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. 
The title of the message today, Emmanuel, God with us. Man, we're getting ready to celebrate the Christmas season. And I just thought, man, what a way to just kick off our Christmas season with a good Christmas message about God being with us. I guess if there ever was a time to know and to realize that God's with us, it'd be now, wouldn't it? For us, it's here. Yeah, it's just good to know. I I don't think there's any greater blessing, if you will, than just to know that God's with you, okay? I don't think there's any more lonely or miserable place uh, to be than when you know that God's not with you, okay? And God wants to be with you. He wants to be friends with you. He, he went out of his way for you and me. He created you, okay? He desires a relationship with you and me, and I think that's what's so neat. He's no respecter of persons, you know? Uh, he don't think one better than the other, if you will. And, man, I'm just glad that I personally can have and do have a relationship with God. And I'm telling you, it just makes every day better. And it's what keeps me going. It's my source, if you will. It's my power. And I'm just glad to be called a child of the King. I'm telling you, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be a child of God. I'm not intimidated by it. I'm not embarrassed by it. I'm not backward by it. I want you to know I'm I'm a Christian. Amen. And I've been saved by the grace of God through faith, which is uh, from above. Amen. And he come to seek and to save that which is lost. He come that none should perish. And I want to tell you what, if you want something worth living for, you need to get this gift, God with you, amen? And he gave you a choice. He gave you a free will. You can have it. If you don't have it, you're in trouble. You're doomed for failure, I'm telling you. It's not a good ending, I'm telling you. God come to give life and give it more abundantly. The devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. And I'm telling you, if you're not careful, he'll rob you of a blessing. This is a wonderful story. If you will, we're going to look at verse 18 down to verse 25. I'm going to talk about Emmanuel, okay? I'm going to talk about God being with us, okay? Let's just read a little bit of it here, and I'm sure it'll touch your heart today if you just open your heart up. I'm excited about preaching it. I hope you're as excited about receiving it as I am preaching it, okay? Uh, You know, a lot of stuff going on, you know, a lot of things. The Bible said in Timothy, in the last days, perilous times shall come, grievous, desperate, trying, desperate times. Okay, don't take a rocket scientist to figure it out. You don't have to be churchy to know there's something in the air, something happening, something going on. Okay, you should look around, you should listen, you pay attention, you'll see things are coming to pass. You know, I mean, it's all being summed up. Amen. God's got a plan, and so you need to know that God's with you. I'm telling you, it can help you more than anything else in life. It's just to know God's with you. You know. Um, and I'm going to get ahead of myself. I've got to read this or I'm going to start preaching. So I, let me read, okay? Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, you know, sometimes before I go any farther, we need to think on these things. We might not understand it all. Things might seem uh, chaotic, and we don't know which way to turn. We don't know the outcome. We don't know what to say sometimes. We don't know what to do, okay? But you got to think on those things, you know, and he just wanted to think on those things, uh, what to do. I mean, he had a tough situation, and so he had to think on those things, if you will. And so, anyway, where did I end at there? And, and now the, huh? 20, okay. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. In other words, she had not been with another man. She hadn't cheated on you, okay? This is a God thing. And I know what everybody else is going to be thinking, okay, what they might say to you, but just trust me. I'm going to work it out. It's a God thing. It's something that's uh, come, it's miraculous, if you will. I'm I'm going to work it out for you. You just got to trust me. Amen? I'm with you. God's with you, okay? And so, and while he thought on these things, the Lord appeared unto him, and Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, 
For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son. She'll call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now listen, there's many gods, but there's one Jesus. <laughs> Amen? And the Jesus I'm talking about is the God who sent his son Jesus, okay, to die on the cross of Calvary. I'm going to tell you, you can talk God all day long, but when you mention Jesus, it'll cause heads to turn. <laughs> I'm telling you, it'll prick hearts, if you will. It'll cause people's ears to stand up, amen? It'll get people's attention when you mention Jesus, okay? And that's who I'm talking about today, Jesus, this Emmanuel, if you will, because his name should be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord of the prophet saying, Behold a virgin shall be with child, she shall bring forth a son, they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted is God with us. And then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and he took unto him his wife and he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, if you want, you can shut your Bibles. I'm going to preach to you a little bit, share some good things with you, amen. <clears throat> Hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll write it in your heart with a message today that you won't forget. Maybe it will challenge you, grow you in faith, inspire you, amen, if you will. It might save you this morning. You know, I thought about God with us. Jesus came to earth. He came to earth. God sent his son. God wanted to come to earth and be with his people. So he sent his son, Jesus, okay? He was born of a virgin birth, okay? Something that's miraculous. It's a God thing for that to be, okay? And so God with us, amen, if you will. And so anyway, he's telling Joseph, Joseph, man, he's confused. He didn't know how all this is going to pan out. He's worried about it, man. Well, I mean, I'm getting ready to marry this lady. She's come up pregnant. <laughs> and she said she's been with no one, okay? And, man, he's pondering this in his heart. And he's seeking God, and he's trusting God, and God's telling him it's okay, okay? She's a virgin. It's a God thing. She's going to bear Jesus, my son, for the sins of the world. It's going to be okay, Joseph. It's going to work out. And you're going to be the father. You're going to be the earthly father. I'm going to be the heavenly father, and it's going to work out. I know there's things in your life you've wondered sometimes how it's going to work out, how it's going to pan out. You might not all stand at all. And, you know, I thought about God, he left heaven and to come and save all mankind. And I thought about all the things that's going on in the world we live. I mean, I got people all the time asking me questions. Kevin, what do you think? Where are we at? Man, is the end here? I mean, what are we going to do? How do we approach this? How, how do we deal with all this going on, man? Where are we going to be? Are we going to get called out? Are we going to be raptured? What's going to happen? Jesus coming back, you know? And people's worried. And, and you know, they're, 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 it's got their attention. And it should get their attention. Come on. Because Jesus is coming back. Amen? And we, he's coming to get a church without spot and without blemish, if you will. And I thought about in all the turmoil. The sickness and the hate and the divisions and the vulgarity and, and how uh, sin's being legalized, okay, if you will. And, and woe to them that call evil good and good evil and all the cancer and all the diseases and all the COVID and the, and, and the inflation and the taxes. And I'm telling you, it's just like, wow, what is going to happen next? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like every day, you just something, something, something. And it's like, man, I can't watch it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can't take this, man. It drives me crazy. You know what I mean? I just got to get some devotion. I got to get some word. I got to know that God's with me. <laughs> you know, that God has a plan, and he's put it in perspective to me. He's in control. <laughs> there ain't no man in control, but God's in control. And I'm just going to trust God. God's with us if you will. Amen. He's with us. And so I won't play it safe. <laughs> I'm just going to trust God. I won't keep living by faith. You know, a Christian walks by faith, not by sight. There's things I don't know why. There's things I don't understand. I don't know exactly when he's coming back, not even angels in heaven. But I'm going to keep going to church. I'm going to keep reading my Bible. I'm going to keep glorifying God. I'm going to keep giving him praise and giving him thanks. I'm going to ask him for help. Amen. Because he's my helper. Amen. And I'm going to just trust him. I don't care what anybody else says or what anybody else thinks. I'm just going 
will trust God because several years ago, September the 6th, 1987, I surrendered my heart to God and I asked him to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I wanted him to be my God and I wanted to be his son and I wanted him to direct my life and be God of my life. I was tired of being sick and tired. I needed something worth living for and I'm still doing it and that's what I'm going to do. Amen. And if he comes back, hallelujah. And if he don't, hallelujah. I'm just going to keep living. What else are you going to do? Amen. You know, it's like the old boy. One day, one day in July, there was this farmer. He was smoking his cob, corn cob pipe. He's sitting there in front of the house. You know, a stranger walks up. And he asked him, he said, hey, how's your cotton? Ain't got no cotton. You ain't got no cotton? No, didn't, didn't plant any cotton. I was afraid he'd get <laughs> bull weevil. Oh, afraid he'd get bull weevil, huh? Yeah. What about your corn? Didn't plant no corn. Ain't got no corn. How come you ain't got no corn? I was afraid of drought. Afraid of the drought, huh? Yeah. Well, what about your potatoes? Didn't plant no potatoes. Don't have no potatoes. How come you ain't got potatoes? Because didn't want to get potato bugs. Oh, okay. So what did you plant? He said, I didn't plant nothing. I just want to keep it safe. Huh? And that's the way a lot of people's living. Amen? They're living in fear. Uh huh. They're walking in fear. Come on. And I'm going to tell you what. You play it safe. You trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior and realize that God is with you. That's the safest thing you can play out. <laughs> Amen. Come on. My dad was dying of cancer. And I know I've probably shared this several times with different ones. My dad was dying of stomach cancer. And I'm going to tell you, there, there's something. I was a mommy's boy. Okay. But I'm going to tell you what, I was security in my dad. I like my dad's wisdom. I like my dad's presence, okay? I like my dad being around. When something was going on, I wanted dad. I mean, he would demand. You know what I'm saying? It'd be all right. If dad was there, it was all right. Something going on in the family, if dad was there, I'd look to dad. Dad was there, okay? Now dad, the dad always knew, didn't think would ever die. I thought he'd die, but he didn't think he'd ever die. You know what I'm saying? He, so he's there, and he, he's been diagnosed with cancer, and, and he's got eight weeks to live, okay? And so i got to go up and tell him, Dad, there ain't nothing they can do. Dr. Keller said, you got eight weeks to live, okay? And so, man, muster that up. Some of you have had to do that. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? It'll make you sick on your guts, and you don't know how to approach it, what to say or what to do. Okay, just like some of you are sick on your guts now. You worry about your jobs. You worry about your health. You worry about the economy. You worry about your finances. You know, you wonder about your kids. What your kids are going to face. What your grandkids are going to face. What they're going to be brought up in, huh? Come on, right? And and, and so anyway, I was like, man, I go up there and I tell him, and and he looks at me, and he comforts me. Okay, see my hero. My security, my blanket, if you will, okay? He's going to leave me, okay? I always had him. You see what I'm saying? And, and he says, son, God's with us. <laughs> okay, all right, that's cool. God's with us, huh? No, God's with us, he says. He's with us. He says, son, listen, I've preached over 50 years, and what I've preached, we're going to stand on, we're going to believe in. God's with us. He'll be with us. He said he can heal me. If he wants to heal me, or he can take me home, but God's with us. He said, son, it's going to be okay. He said, let me lead us in prayer. <laughs> okay? And he prayed, and I felt it. God was with us. God gave us the strength. God gave us the comfort. God gave us the power to be able to endure and get through that time of his passing and his sickness. I remember he would go to bed, and it's like God would speak to him in the night. And he would be excited to go to bed because he, what God would say to him. And he'd say, boy, kids, wonder tonight what God's going to tell me, huh, in my sleep. He said, I can't wait. I'm going to go get in bed now. And if I don't wake up, you know God's with us, huh? He's still with us. And in all the chaos, in all the turmoil that's going on with people, huh, in our nation, and the world we live, I just want you to know God's with us. Come on. He desires a relationship 
with you and me. And when it's all chaotic and you don't know what to say or what to do, you just know God's with you. Come on. See, I'm going to tell you, he's just not with us but he's our helper. He's not just our helper, he's our redeemer. He's not just our redeemer, he's the well of living waters. He's the river of life. He's the great I am. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the prince of peace. He's the comforter. He's the God of all gods. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's not just with you. He's everything. Glory to God. He's everything. Give him praise. Woo, glory to God. Yeah, and so whatever they say on the news, it don't matter. You just trust God. You say, keep going to church, keep praying. You know, it's like putting the blood on the doorpost for the Egyptians. Huh? We're a family of God, man. Why do we live the way we live? Because we know that every man should give an account to God. And that God's coming back, and he's going to get his church. And I'm looking forward to that day. I've thought about, you want to know anything about God? You want to know what he says about heaven? Huh? You can read it. He'll tell you. You know how to get to heaven? God tells you how to get to heaven. He said in John 3, 3, you must be born again. Huh? He said, I am the way. No man can come to the Father but by me. So if you want to go to heaven... If you want God with you, then you must surrender yourself and realize you're an old wretched sinner and you need a Savior. You need God with you. And in order to do that, you have to show humility. Huh? You, you got to get pride out of the way. You got to get up out of your seat and you got to come to God. You know, you got to make a way to come. You got to have somebody to excuse you. Some of you need to come. You've not come. You sit there and sit there. You believe there's a God, but you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You believe that in the Christian faith, in the Christian way, but you publicly have never professed faith. And Jesus tells you how, and you won't do it. You want God with you. You've got to come this way. Did he ever send anybody to hell? You want to know what he said about hell? He said, fear him who's able to destroy the body and soul in hell. <laughs> you can't have heaven without hell, you know. And yes, God, he didn't come to send people to hell. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. It says so in the book of Mark. In the ninth chapter, in the 41st verse, it says hell was made for the devil and his angels. But fear him who's able to kill the body. You want to know what he said about marriage? He said something about marriage. Did you know that? What did he say about marriage? He said, well, you shall leave your mother and father and cleave unto your wife, and you become one. Amen? And he talked about letting the church, okay, be the bride and be married to him and be one, if you will. So there's something about marriage, amen? You hear what he ever said about the compromisers? Huh? Oh, I'm making you nervous now, huh? He went into the church. He took a whip. He turned the tables over, and he ran them out of the house. He said, this house, you made it a den of thieves, huh? And he wouldn't put up with it. There's things God will not put up with. He's a judge. He's a God of grace. He's a God of mercy, if you will, but he's a just God. And I'm telling you, he will not put up with compromising. Come on. And he ran them out of the house with a whip. Not only that, you, you want to know what he said about forgiveness? He gets this lady. They bring this lady. She, she's an old adulterer. And all these guys went, hey, you heard about this? This lady's committed adultery. And they bring her to Jesus. Oh, boy, he's really going to do something with her now. You know what he tells her? He said, go and sin no more. Amen. But before he did, he wrote something in the ground. Got their intention. I don't know if he said, get the beam out of your own eye if you will, get your own life right before you be bringing her, amen, worrying about somebody else, worry about your own life. But he made a way of forgiveness. He said, go and sin no more. Pretty neat, amen. You know what he thought about sin? You know what God thought about sin? That he sent his son to become that once and for all sacrificial lamb. That 
He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes were healed. He took our place. He paid our debt. He suffered our hell. John said, in 1, 29, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Huh? That gruesome death that he hung on the cross of Calvary. His blood was shed for you and me. They mocked him. They slapped him. They hit him. They played a crown of thorns on his head. They scourged him at the scourging post. You know, we become complacent. We really sometimes, we're like cops that's immune to crime or a doctor immune to disease. We sit in church Sunday after Sunday. We hear the Christmas story. We hear about Manuel, God with us. We hear about the cross, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and any more. We're not stirred. We're not moved. We forgot where we come from. We forgot what it took to get us saved and how God chose us and how he pursued us and how he went after us and things he put in our path. People he sent our way, try to get our attention because he wants to be with you. And you think how many times you've refused him, you've rejected him. You know what he says about being busy? Huh? Because we're all so busy. We can't even sit down and eat. It's kind of neat the other day, sitting down to eat with everybody. You know, most of the time we eat on the run. You know, we'll run through the drive through run and get this, run and get that. We run in church, we run out of church. Well, I wonder how long is it going today? Well, it's 11.53, I'll be done in a minute. Huh? I got a funeral, so I got to cut it short. <laughs> huh? Woo, glory to God. Uh-oh, it might be time now. They calling, who is it? Oh, you need me to get it? Is it Rose? Oh, somebody don't go to church. Tell, invite her. Invite her to church, Jerry. Anyway, I know, son. I, sometimes you can't help it. You get calls in church. <laughs> You'll be trying to get me back on another one, won't you? <laughs> it's like, oh, somebody called. Hey. No, I'll be done here in a minute. Yeah, I can't today. I'm going. I got a funeral. I, we'll go later. Yeah, I want to go hunting. <laughs> <laughs> he forgot it was Sunday. <laughs> oh man! Better take a drink, get baptized. Woo. Debbie, I'm still as crazy as I ever was, man. It ain't changed. <laughs> Some about being grow, being raised in Spiller Town. That's what's did it. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, it was about. Martha and Mary. Jesus goes to Martha and Mary's house, okay? And Martha's cumbered about with much serving, okay? You've heard the story, right? And Mary sits at the feet of Jesus. And, and Martha starts complaining. Jesus, you see what Mary's done? It's like some of you, you cooked for two days before Thanksgiving, and then here comes somebody in with a bowl of corn. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> about that big <laughs> bag of chips. <laughs> hey, I bought a loaf of bread. <laughs> hey, got to go. We got to go to mother-in-law's. <laughs> I'll see you. Hey, you need help cleaning up? I'd say. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Only some of you work hard know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I get myself tickled. Huh? All right, so anyway, she griping and complaining, Leo. And uh, here's another spiller town in. <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> They're all over in here. Look out. <laughs> so anyway, I better stop. Gosh, stop it. So anyway, he says, Martha, Martha. thinking about the wrong thing. He said, best thing you could do, sit at the feet of Jesus. Best thing you can do. That's what he says about being busy. He said, well, I'm busy. You don't understand. I work six days a week. Sunday's my day. Oh, okay. Go ahead, grab and complain about it. Go ahead and leave if you want. Huh? But, so, that's what we do. We're so busy. We're so busy, God didn't give us a family, kids and grandkids, friends, 
to never spend time with. We're so busy. See, we're always, we're always going to spend time together. We're always going to do something. We're so busy. Remember what it was like when we used to not be busy? You'd sit out on the yard. Everybody had a lawn chair. Huh? And you sit out there. You make homemade ice cream. You go visit your cousins. Huh? Spray down so you wouldn't get ate up by some mosquitoes. You know what I'm saying? You know, you chase lightning bugs. Make you a necklace out of them. Bracelet. Remember what that was like back in the day? Huh? You know, you wasn't on your iPhone or your iPad. Little kid now, you watch a little kid, first thing mom does, give them that iPad. <laughs> That's all they'll do is sit there the whole time. Ain't no playing tag, kick the can, no running around, don't know what the outside's like. Come on, we've got too busy. See, God wants to be with us. Huh? And we've lost that. We need to get it back. And there's a way to get it back. Purpose in your heart that you're going to get your laugh back, your time back, huh? your love for life back, and everything. You know, it's time to make some decisions. It's a holiday, and it can be hectic if you're not careful. And there can be a lot of pressure at this time of the year. Where you're going for Christmas, what you got to buy somebody, all the things you got to do. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you just take time out, you'll look around. And you'll take a deep breath and you'll just look in what God's done for you. And that God's with you, it'll be better than anything else you could do. That's the message. Let's stand. Dear Heavenly Father God, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, for these families. I pray your hedge around them, God. I pray if there be a need for someone today, I pray they'll come. I just pray that they'll realize you're with us. God, we need you. We can't make it without you. And God, please wrap your loving arms around us. Help us in our doubt. Help us in our loneliness. Help us, God, in our sin to overcome it. God, help us to be mindful of the rich things you give us each and every day of our life. God, we can never thank you or praise you enough. God, please touch these people on the prayer list. Please be with these families. If someone needs to be saved today, I pray they'll come and be found. We give you all the praise. Amen. <clears throat>
see Jesus when we all see Jesus no more sickness no more madness no more pain when we all see Don't forget tonight we have the Browders at 6 o'clock. And if someone could be here, are they supposed to be at 3 or 3.30? We need help unloading the bus. So if anybody could be here, I'd appreciate it. All right? Can, can somebody be here so we know if anybody could come and be here? Could you raise your hand? Got one? All right. Two? Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Four. All right. You guys pick your money up at the door. All right. Huh? Yeah, they need help Wednesday at the Ministerial Alliance in Goreville at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. If any way possible you could come and help Wednesday, Goreville Ministerial Alliance needs your help. Okay, sorting clothes, putting stuff away. All right. Any other announcements? None? All right. Okay, you got to tell at least three people. Bye. Three people. Okay? <laughs> <laughs>